Welcome my fellow Vikings. This is my top 10 tips for when starting out in Valheim to lead you on a successful path to Valhalla. Number 10, with a hop, skip and a jump. At the start of this wondrous game, you only have a torch and a small rag to cover your naughty bits. But don't stress, you won't need all the latest bling straight away and to save time and energy, just go with the real Billy basics. There should be enough sticks and stones laying about to craft yourself a hammer and a stone axe. And don't worry, Hugin's words will never hurt you, although sometimes he can be a bit of an annoying budgie. The stone axe will double up as a good enough weapon early on, and you always have the torch in case you are more of a sadistic pyromaniac and like to watch graylings burn. But anyway, enough about me. Now you have your basics, spend a little bit of time just getting the feel for the controls and keeping to the open grassy areas with the pretty yellow flowers. Learn to run about, roll around and jump over things. By doing this, you'll start to advance your basic skills, which will enable you to level up your character's abilities, making terrain traversal easier and with less stamina loss. An important, yet rather morbid note, all actions you make in the game will help advance the character attributes. However, each time you die, you'll lose 5% from the total level skills in each of the attributes. In case you're wondering, you won't lose the physical stuff you're carrying at the time of death, and this will be available for collection in a handy little glowing tombstone with your name on it, just so the Grey Dwarfs know it's not theirs and to keep their grubby little mitts off. Number 9. Getting breadcrumbs everywhere. Unless you're a hardcore nutcase who wants to sadistically drive themselves insane by not using the map, use the map. The Valheim map is designed in such a way that it's very easy and quick to use, but also allows you to add points of interest and labels using the five different symbols. For example, a little house to mark a potential base or shelter, a dot to mark a potential copper location, etc. Now, although it can be easy to drop too many markers, they are super easy to remove with a few clicks. And in case you are marking crypts, you can apply a red cross to the marker by simply clicking on it so you don't waste time travelling to a location you've already located and cleared. The map will be initially covered by fog that will be uncovered as you discover new areas, so it's always a good idea to work your way around the perimeter of your island to map out the area and decide on which direction you're going to take your initial travels. Your position will be marked by an arrow in the direction you are facing. During exploration, a mini-map will be displayed in the top right, which gives you a few bits of useful info. The direction you are facing is marked by the yellow arrow, and the wind direction is the white arrow at the bottom left. You can zoom this minimap in and out by using the comma and the full stop keys on your keyboard, as by default the minimap will be fully zoomed into your location. Number 8. DIY SOS Although you may wish to get into your architect mode early on, when you're roaming about and exploring, you'll more than likely find a million places that you'd prefer your initial base to be. So my advice is just to keep it simple and utilise any of the abandoned buildings you come across to fix up and use your initial base. They will need some repairs, but simply place a workbench inside the building and provided that it's sheltered, you'll be able to repair the existing walls, floors, roofs, etc. for free without having to spend ages grappling your chopper out in the wilderness. With a few modifications, you can add a fireplace, a cooking station, and most importantly a bed. And voila! A great little starter base camp to warm you up, get some rest and prepare yourself ready to start your adventures. Now it might seem obvious, but rain will extinguish fires when built outside. However, if you don't give yourself adequate ventilation, you'll take smoke damage if you place a fire inside. So you need to make sure that you build some sort of chimney to funnel the smoke away. Then you can sit back and relax, maybe toast some marshmallows, or maybe a neck eyeball or some other Viking delicacy. Number 7. Listening to Beyoncé When roaming around in Valheim, pay attention to the derelict structures for one other reason. Bees. These little fairy friends will be very useful as they produce honey. This is an amazing food item early on for stamina gain, but also used a lot in later game for various food and drink recipes, but also potions. However, be a little careful here, as if you get too close to a wild hive, they'll sting you. And out of all the wild ferocious creatures to die to in Valheim, Death to bees is not going to be a good bragging right at the local alehouse. To obtain the queen, you need to destroy the wild hive. Now there are a variety of ways to do this, the easiest being to stand back and shoot the hive with a burn arrow. However, early game you probably won't have one of these, so a nice easy way, which will also gain you some extra resources, is to build a workbench nearby, repair all the damaged parts of the house using the free repair ability, and then destroy the entire structure. If you don't want the free wood, then just simply destroy any of the existing structure 
the wild beehive is attached to, and the queen bee will drop out. Remember to pick her up, as she is valuable, and there are only a finite number on your map. You'll now be able to build your own beehive, which will produce one honey every 20 minutes, and can hold up to four before you need to harvest them. My advice would just be to start stockpiling the honey, ready for use later on, although feel free to stand at the hive and stuff your face like a deranged bear if you like. No judgement here. Number 6. Let's have a butchers. Now there are a variety of food sources available early on, but it's important to know the difference between these, so you don't go stuffing your face with all the wrong items, which could contribute to the character's early death. All food items have three stats, health, stamina and rate of healing. You can consume up to three different items at any time, although they will all have different durations before you need to eat again. Each one of the attributes stack, hence why it's important to eat the right things for the task at hand. If you look in your inventory, there will be a little coloured fork by the side of the food item. Red represents a health bonus, gold a stamina bonus, and silver means it gives you the same health and stamina bonuses. Firstly, there are the plants. Raspberries, mushrooms, blueberries and yellow mushrooms are the main plants you'll encounter early on. These predominantly give a stamina boost, although the red mushrooms will give an equal health and stamina boost. Now we have the meat. Wild boar, necktail and deer will be the first three you encounter. Deer will require a bit of skill to kill, but will pose no danger otherwise. Neck are easy to kill, but give you a sharp nip on the toes if you're not careful. But boars are ferocious animals, and can very easily do you a nasty amount of damage, and will continually attack once they have spotted you, so watch your back. Once you have your meat, you'll need to cook it, which can be done with a basic spit over your campfire. The meat is predominantly health based and gives you double the rate of healing, although it still gives a slight stamina boost, and all three of these will last for 20 minutes. One thing to remember though when cooking, keep an eye on your meat whilst over the fire. You'll hear a fizz when cooked and you'll be able to click on it and remove the delicious morsels, but leave it too long and you'll receive charcoal. Now if this happens don't be too sad as you'll need this later on anyway, so store it in a safe place and stick another shrimp on the barbie, or in this case another leg of bambi. Number 5. Yabba Dabba Doo! Well we're not talking about Fred or Barney here, but Flintstones. You'll find these near the edges of water, and it's important to collect a good amount of these, as they have several uses throughout Valheim, but early on they are super important to advance your workbench level, with a chopping block and tanning rack, as well as enabling you to build flint axe, spear, knife, and more importantly, flint head arrows. But we'll get on to why these are important later. Number 4. The boring bit. Well, it's not so much boring, but the first farm system you'll want to make is a world boar farm. This will ensure you have a plentiful supply of meat and leather scraps. However, it's not the easiest of things to get working, and will require a lot of patience to set up. Wild boars come in three different variations, normal, one star, and two star boars, each increasing in danger as they can inflict more blunt damage on attack, but this increases also in their reward yield. Killing a normal, zero star boar will give one leather scraps and one meat. A one star boar will give two leather scraps and two meat, but a two star boar gives four leather scraps and four meat, so well worth looking out for these. Initially you may not see any starved boars, so to get things going, just use what you have spawning close to your base. It's important to make a fairly large pen to house your boars, which you can do with either the fencing or a normal wooden walls. Pop on a doorway and leave it open. Then run close to a wild boar and simply get it to chase you back into the pen. Once the boar's inside, shut the door and jump out. In order to tame the boar, you'll need to throw down some food. At this stage, just use red mushrooms, as you won't yet have any root vegetables. Pack your bag and go and do some exploring. Whilst you're away, the boars will slowly tame, so by the time you come back from your adventures, they should be friendly. You can now throw some more food into the pen, and before long, the piggies will start getting jiggy. And then you'll have some little piglets. Now for the darker side of the equation. To kill the tamed boars early on, the quickest way is just to turn PvP on in your menu. This will enable you to slaughter the piglets once they grow up into pigs. There is a butcher's knife you can make to do this much more efficiently, but this requires tin, which at this stage you probably don't have. However, this will be required to the later stage for culling various other furry friends. Number 3. Robin Hood and his Merry Men You may be wondering why I have not yet mentioned the bow. Well, there's a jolly good reason for this. The initial bow you can make is called a crude bow, and it's about as useful as throwing toothpicks randomly at your enemy. It has very little power, is widely inaccurate, and in my opinion a complete or not a waste of time. However, the next bow you're able to make is called a finewood bow, 
and this, my fellow rampaging Vikings, is the one you'll want to make. All round, it's a much better bow. With only a chopping block and a tanning rack to get your workbench to level 3, you'll be able to upgrade this bad boy to deal 38 pierce damage, and have a pretty amazing durability of 200. Combine that with some snazzy fire or flint arrows, and you'll be setting yourself up for beating that first boss. Now there is one teensy weensy little catch here, and the clue is in its name. Yes, that's right, you'll need fine wood. Unfortunately, until you have made bronze, you're not able to freely chop the fine wood birch trees down, as they're too hard to use the stone or flint axe. So, we'll need to be creative. Find an area where there's several birch trees together on a gradual slope. These are the white ones, by the way. With beech trees above them, the normal coloured trees. Now cut the beech trees so that they fall onto the birch trees. Now this may take a while, but once you have created the perfect domino, you can either roll the fallen birch trees into looks and other fallen trees to make it take damage, or roll the other trees into the birch trees. This will have the same effect. Once the birch tree finally breaks, collect the wood and you'll be given a load of new crafting recipes, and if you're super lucky, the birch tree may even drop a seed. Hold on to this, as birch tree seeds are like gold dust, and will enable you to plant your own fine wood at a later date. You'll need 10 fine wood to craft the fine wood bow, so make sure you have enough. You may want to rinse and repeat this until you have a total of 25 fine wood so that you can upgrade to level 3. Unfortunately, we still need one other component to make this bad boy, and that is core wood. Now this can be cut with your normal stone or flint axe, but it only grows in the black forest. So grab some food, either a club and shield just in case you need to play baseball with some grey dwarf heads, and let's go! Once you're near black forest, look out for the pine trees, as this is what we're after. You should be able to easily spot them amongst the fir trees, so creep carefully to the nearest pine and chop chop chop! You should be able to grab the required 10 core wood pretty quick, but again, if you want to upgrade the fine wood bow to a level 3, you'll need 25 core wood in total. Once you have the required amount, escape the black forest and head back to camp and craft that thing of beauty. I'd also recommend making a full stack of standard wood arrows, fire arrows and flint arrows. Number 2 if you go down to the woods today. Well, this wouldn't be a guide if I didn't mention trolls, and they certainly can be a big surprise. There are two varieties, the rock hurling buggers and the tree wielding buggers. Both are just as dangerous, although the tree wielders tend to be more of a pain as they have a huge reach with their hefty log. Trolls have a base health of 600, which goes up to 1800 if you're unlucky enough to meet a two star beastie. Luckily, you'll be easily able to tell if you need to run, run as fast as you can, as the normal zero star trolls are blue, the one stars are green, and the two stars are a ready flesh colour. And trust me, you can't miss them. Luckily, trolls are weak to pierce damage, and give you a 1.5% damage multiplier against this, so thankfully we have made our finewood bow, and a stack of flint arrows, which will give a base damage of 40.5, including the pierce damage multiplier. Keep your fire arrows for now, as although they'll inflict elemental damage from the fire, they only have a pierce damage of 16.5, including the multiplier. So if you run out of flint shooty sticks, then just use normal wooden arrows, as these actually have a fairly good pierce damage of 33, and are by far the cheapest to make, only requiring 8 wood to craft 20 arrows. Trolls will drop 3 different items on death. A number of gold coins between 20 and 116, troll hide between 5 pieces and 20 pieces, and a 50% chance to drop a troll trophy that you can stick on your base to warn any other travellers that you're a one mean son of a gun and shouldn't be messed with. Although you should collect gold coins for a later game, the troll hide is really what you want, as you'll be able to craft a set of troll hide pants, tunic, helmet and cape. Once you have a full set, you'll be able to sneak about like a little sneaky thing, with an additional 15 points into your sneak effect. However, Please note that you will require a lot of troll hide to advance the quality of all pieces to a level 4, and by which time you'll probably be able to make better armour. But if you do manage, then awesome sausage! And finally, number 1. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We have finally reached that time, my friend, that I feel you are ready to face your first boss, Ichthyr. Do not worry, use what you have learnt through this guide and go forth with good food in your belly and fire arrows in your bow and victory will be yours. In order to call the boss, you'll need to have first located one of its summoning locations. This is quite simple, and just requires you to interact with a small stone with a glowing red decal at the sacrificial stone spawn point, where you started. Once you have the location of this summoning point, head on over with two freshly severed deer heads, assign them to one of your numbered inventory slots, 
and interact with a large stone slab, placing the deer heads on as an offering by pressing the corresponding number on your keypad. The air will be filled with the glowing sparkles, but watch where they convene as this will be the spawning point for your foe. Remember your dance moves and ready your bow with flaming arrows as you get ready to deal those deadly blows whilst dancing in the moonlight to avoid the bursts of lightning cascading off the horns of the red-eyed beast. Once you have the head of your foe in your hands, you will be rewarded with three hard antlers. Return to the sacrificial stones where you started this magical journey and hang the head proudly on the corresponding stone. This will enable your first forsaken power, which temporarily boosts your stamina and movement abilities once activated. Take the antlers and return to your trusty workbench. You'll now be able to craft the antler pickaxe, allowing you to mine stone and other metals from the earth. Good luck, worthy Viking, and fear not death, for the hour of your doom is set, and none may escape.